I grew up in this neighborhood, literally around the corner, on Avenue B between 3rd and 4th. I don't recognize it now, but if I could put everyone here in a time machine to travel back there, you wouldn't recognize it either. Everyone then was one generation away, if that, from someplace else. The kind of someplace else that never sparks a question like, why did you leave? <laughs> Sicily's sulfur mines, Germany's camps, and Stalin's Ukraine set the bar pretty low for everybody's parents about what was acceptable living standards, and it showed. But nobody complained, and everybody got along. It was like the UN without the parking privileges. <laughs> Slowly, though, things began to change. My mom stopped taking me to the sandbox at Tompkins Square Park. It was becoming the world's largest open-air ashtray, but after the first hypodermic needle sighting, we switched to the swings and my dad started to refer to the element, which made it seem like we were all lab mice drafted into some kind of experiment. And so at the start of the summer, before my first grade, my mom stopped taking me to the park altogether. Instead, she took a job as a substitute in the cafeterias and summer schools in the neighborhood, and she took me along. I put stuff away in the kitchens at PS 19, and I learned to set lunchroom tables at PS 122. I t when I told my mother it had become an, a, an alternative art center, her only comment was, they had mice. <laughs> One morning she told me we were going to a 600 school. I thought that meant there were 600 kids there. It seemed like an awful lot of kids for her to cook for. I was too young at the time to know what phrases like emotionally disturbed meant. Mom just told me, it's a school for kids who get in too much trouble to be in regular school. If they don't behave, that's where they go. She said that with a meaningful glance that kept me in line all the way to fourth grade. And it sounded like a jail for kids. And when we arrived, it even had metal mesh on the windows. But I was a kid. We got settled in. I was making music with the forks and spoons. And a student, a young teenage girl, stopped by to say hello to the lunch ladies. Her mom worked at a lunchroom, too and I had never seen anybody like her. Her name was Denise. She had smooth black hair and a page boy with a little bow on top and big brown eyes. She wore a kind of jumper and sneakers with the whitest ankle socks I had ever seen. She smiled when she saw me and I stopped the music and my mom nudged me to say hello. She's shy, mom explained. Denise reached her hand down to me and I took it unquestioningly. It was like any other hand that had reached down to mine before. So dark on one side, so pink on the other. It was like the inside of seashells that I saw in picture books. She had a gold bracelet, which I thought was very glamorous, but I didn't know the word for that, so I just told her it was pretty, and she smiled at me and said, thanks. And she said, come along. And she said, I'll show you again. She took me upstairs to the roof. I didn't see Hopscotch Squares or Kelly Squares or anything like that, but Denise said, this is a different kind of game. She spent what seemed like hours showing me a game with a basketball. You bounce it against the wall, and when it bounced back, you had to jump over it. I couldn't get the hang of it. The ball wouldn't bounce right, or I couldn't jump, or the ball got away from me. And I probably, at the time, outweighed the ball by about 10 pounds, but she kept it up. She was encouraging me to try again. You almost had it that time. Let me show you one more time. I was sorry I couldn't learn her game when she was so nice, but I loved hearing her bracelet jingle every time she tossed the ball. I wished I had a jingly bracelet, too. And she smiled when I told her I liked the noise that she had made. When the time was up, Denise reached down her hand again and smiled and said it was time to go. We went downstairs to the kitchen and she delivered me to my mom. How was she? My mom asked. She did great, Denise said, and bent down to give me a hug. When she left, she turned around to wave goodbye, and I waved back. She made sure to wave all the way down the hallway so I could hear her bracelet jingling as she walked away. Thank you. Wow.